Hello everybody, I hope you're doing great. This is another live stream where I want to show you what I'm doing with Athena. If you have not watched the previous stream where I was talking about Athena and you're wondering what we do with Athena, I'm just going to have a brief recap here so that you know what Athena is all about on AWS. Athena is a serverless service which allows us to query data in S3. Have you ever had a JSON file and you're wondering how you can extract data from that using an SQL statement? Then Athena is the solution for you. So for the past week, I've just been playing around with this series and while I'm playing around with it, I just find it interesting to share with you what I'm doing and I hope that it's going to, to help you. So I'm going to show you what I've been able to do today and how you can achieve that because the objective is to save the results of your query in an S3 bucket. So you have a source bucket which, contain, which contains the data you want to query and you equally have a destination bucket which can store the results of your query. So in this session, I want to show you what I've been able to, to do with that. It's very easy, it's not, uh, easy, it's nothing complicated. So everybody can do this. It has no coding as of now, and I've not added anything related to coding. So even if you're, you're new to the cloud and you don't have any programming language, as uh, you don't know how to code in any programming language, you can achieve this. Okay, but you need to know SQL, of course. So let me just show you what I've been doing. So this is where we are. And uh, here we have two buckets. We have the destination bucket and we have the source bucket. The source bucket is the bucket where I put in the files, which is this one, which I intend to query. So this is the, the data I have in my JSON file. As you can see, this is the data right here. The data has been cleaned and the data has been generated using Mocha row, as I told you in the previous video. But once the data is generated with this, you have to clean the data. You can watch my previous video for that. So this is the data I have in my source bucket. And um, right here, I have the, the query. I have the, the query editor where I can do execute my queries and have results. So once I execute a query, there is a possibility for me to save the results in an S3 bucket. And it's very easy to do that. You just need to go to settings. And once you're here, you go to manage. And in manage, you're going to browse your S3 bucket. So this is the destination bucket I have right here. And I think I showed you that before. If we go back here, this is my destination bucket. This is it. This is the same bucket I'm having right here. You set your destination bucket and you click on save. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that again. I just wanted to show you what I have done. If I go back to the query editor and I execute this query, I'm going to have the results saved in my destina destination bucket. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, let's just go to the destination bucket, which is this one. We click on that and here you can go to SFDC account. No, there is nothing here, sorry. I go to SFDC data. I go to this one and you can see I have all account data. It takes the name of the query because once I'm in the query editor, I can save this query. And to save the query, you just go to save and you click save as and you give it a name. And the name you're going to give, that is exactly the same name you're going to have at the level of the, of the bucket. So if I click on this, you have subfolders in it, which has the date. Today is the 29th, and this is the data. It's going to store the results as a CSV file, and it's equally going to have metadata. Maybe it will be easier for you to do this thing if we can do it together again, so that you see exactly the steps I carried out to be able to achieve this. Okay, so let's just go back to the query editor and I'm going to click on a new editor, which is this one. And here I'm going to do another query. So the query is going to select because this is my table here and the table has some fields. We have ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and IP address. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select just the email and we are going to save the results in the, uh, in the S3 bucket. 
Okay, so here I'm going to have select all. Sorry, my screen. Oh, I think there is a okay. Select everything. No, I said we're going to select the email. So we are going to select email from my table name is a uh, demo yes records, but the database name is DB demo. Remember, you have to put everything in quotation marks. Here we are having the no, uh, how do we call it? We are having Athena's query language, which is a little bit different from what we usually do. You have to include it. So I have demo, which is this one. Then here I need to put a dot, then the quotation marks again, then demo, yes, she codes. Okay, I think everything is fine. Yeah, so we are going to select just the email. I think we should include the ID as, as well. I'm going to include the ID so that we have the ID and the email. So this is my query right here. What I need to do is I'm going to save this query, save as, I need to give it a name, ID and email of data. Okay, here I'm going to leave it optional, but you can give a description. I'm going to save the query. You see here, everything is successful. And now we have ID and email of data right here. So now we are going to run this query. I run the query. And uh, yeah, here we have our results, which is ID and email. But interesting thing will be to go back to our S3 bucket and see what has happened at the level of the bucket. So I'm going to go back here. And uh, this is what is going to happen. I have a file here. I have uh, not a file, a folder structure, which has ID and email of data. If you realize we have percentage 20 because I included uh, spaces uh, when I was giving the name. So if you don't include spaces, you're going to have the name exactly the way you give it. For example, here I had all account data and I didn't have spaces. So it was written out clearly, but it's, it's still the same thing. I click on that. We still have the same folder structure. I click on it. We have the date. And once we are here, this is what we have. You see, we have done it right now which is 1634, yeah? And you can click on this CSV to see what you have. I'm going to open that. Oh, sorry. I have opened it, but I'm so sorry, I'm not sharing my whole desktop. So I will not be able to share the, the file with you. But when you click on open, it's going to download the CSV to your computer, and there you're exactly going to see the records we have right here. That is records, which is just uh, the ID and the email. That was it for this video. I just wanted to show you how you can achieve this and I hope that you have learned something from it. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends and let's just keep coding. And uh, yeah, what do I have to say? I have to say the AWS Summit is coming up on the 21st and 22nd of June and I'm going to be a speaker. So if you are in Milan and you are cloud enthusiasts, please come to the summit and you're going to see the black girl in tech be on the mic. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>